Being a CEO starts up here. You don't have to be a, you don't have to own a business to be a CEO. Being a CEO is a mentality. When I first started, sell 10,000 pair, 20,000 pair, 50,000 pair, and then it just kept going. So, you know, I've been doing it since, since 95. So 95 to now, that's what, 30 something years? 400 million pair. So think about this real quick. A lot of times people think financial freedom, financial independence is building up a pile of cash and just chilling in, in the beach, in the Bahamas, whatever the case may be. But why is Shaq still working today? Why is Shaq still on the NBA show? Why is Shaq still commentating? Why is Shaq still relevant in the NBA today? Because he loves this game. What's cracking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we have another reaction video to none other than the most dominant player in the history of the NBA, Shaq. And I'm very excited about this reaction video because in the next couple months, we will actually be hosting our national convention at the MGM Grand Arena. And guess who our headline speaker is? Yes, Shaq. So a couple of years ago, right before the pandemic, we had Kobe Bryant and he had some he had said some things about Shaq on our stage, sadly before he passed away, rest in peace, Kobe, that made it viral. They made it to TMZ, they made it to ESPN. Our website of our company just got crushed. There's so many people are looking up our company, our CEO Patrick, but they was doing the interview of Kobe Brown, was able to rap with Kobe uh, behind stage. But I'm very excited about what Shaq has to say about that relationship next couple months. But meanwhile, uh, let's take a look at this video here on what Shaq talked about in terms of financial literacy, spending a lot of money in a day. I'll give you the amount here in a second. Uh, selling lots and lots and lots of shoes. And of course, the power of self-education. Self so let's take a look at this interview. Uh, looks like it, this is on a uh, an EYL. These guys I keep seeing up all over the place. Good, good job for these guys. Earn Your Leisure podcast. Looks like they had something here called the Invest Fest. And uh, Shaq was their guest speaker. So let's take a look at this. Magic Johnson, the great Magic Johnson gave you some advice when you was 18 years old. Wow. About financial literacy. You know, we always hear about 70% of NBA players go. What a great job for Shaq to be around a Magic Johnson at 18 years old. And also, more importantly, him willing to listen. And uh, I would like to see how this plays out. Going broke. A lot of the NFL players going broke, rappers, entertainers. But you're somebody who obviously made a lot of money while you were playing, but you probably doubled, quadrupled, tripled your net worth after you're playing. It's a success story. So, by the way, this is so true. Uh, a few years ago, three, four years ago, we interviewed. Antoine Walker, who's actually from Chicago, we were chopping it up in a cigar lounge, and uh, he talked about him losing everything, $100 million, and uh, he's currently got a job right now with Northwestern Mutual, and what they do is they basically hire him on, on, on contract to go out and talk to all the NCAA athletes about to get drafted, what it takes to manage your money uh, in the future. But uh, listen, this is a, a sad problem. Let's talk more about why more people lose money, even though they have a lot of money coming at them, they've been broke their whole entire life, but how is it when money comes, finally comes their way, they lose it, stay posted, we'll explain. What are some of the jewels that he gave you when you was a young man that you still carry with you to this day? Well, at first, before I met Magic Johnson, I spent a million dollars in one day. <laughs> ah, this is gonna get juicy. So I know nothing about financial literacy. My agent calls me and said, hey, I got a check for a million. So shit, you know me, I already had that black Mercedes lined up. Of course. <laughs> I mean, think about it right now. What has the government paid everybody in the last couple of years? And you can't get mad at the fact that these stimulus plans, who ended up with all the money? Was it the multicultural middle class and, and, and poor people that got the money? Well, they did, to an extent, unemployment checks and stimulus checks, but where did the money end up? End up with the rich, why? Because they had the businesses. So. Those that didn't have businesses, those that were considered consumers, consumed the cash to who? The generators and the producers. And so, as you're watching this, you gotta ask yourself this question. Going forward, do I wanna consider myself a consumer or consider myself a generator or a producer? Because the world favors, and the tax code of America favors generators and producers. Perhaps time for you to make the switch from just being considered and calling yourself and having other people call you a consumer. So I said, I'm about to go get the Mercedes with the wheels, the pullout deck. So it costs 150. So when I get back to the crib, my dad said, where's mine at? Of course. So in my mind, I'm like a million, mine is 150. Shit, I got 850 left, <laughs> right? So I go buy him one, I go buy cash. my mother one. And, and I, I gather he's buying these cars cash due to lack of 
financial literacy. So if you want to hack your way into getting the exotic cars and the cars of your dreams, I got a video right here to watch how I pay for my Rolls Royce and pay 24 bucks a month. By the way, I've already traded this in. A new toy is coming here in the next couple of weeks, but the premise is still true. The principles are still true. If you buy it through a corporation because you educate yourself about financial literacy and you get in business for yourself, a lot of tax benefits open up your way and you can be driving your dream car and living in your dream home a lot sooner than later. You know, I'll get some ice, i get some earrings, get a couple of suits. So I get a call from the bank manager. He says, you spend a million dollars. And I was like, no, I didn't. So then when I'm... I'm yeah, because in his mind, he's doing the math. I just spent this on th two, three cars, spent some jewelry. How the heck did I spend already a million dollars? I'm looking at the paperwork. I see FICA. <laughs> now I get mad. I'm like, hey, I don't know no motherfucking FICA. He took <laughs> 200,000. He probably had another F word in his mind outside of FICA. So, like, Break it down, Shaq. I had no idea what FICA and income to, to, uh, sales tax. By the way, how many, we're all watching this right now. What is FICA? Put in the comment section below. What is FICA? You know what FICA is. State tax, I had no idea what that was. So then I said, okay, I don't want to be like the rest of these NBA players. I got to teach myself. Okay, bottom line, guys, if you didn't see it, he didn't say it. But FICA is basically taxes. Because here's the thing. As a player in the NBA, a player in the NFL, you are considered an employee of the league. Sure, they give you a check, but that's given to you as a W-2. So unlike somebody like myself and many of my peers, we're in business for ourselves. So in other words, when we bring in revenue to our companies and we spend through our company's expenses, like cars, like suits because they're uniforms or like SUVs, property for business use, home rental for business use, home purchase for business use, everything for business use. By the way, great book for you guys to pick up. Lower your taxes big time. Chapter number one, why you would be brain dead not to start your own home-based business. And so when Shaq is looking at his check, he says, Faka right away, never accounts for it, and boom, right there. Taken, money's taken. And so if you're in business for yourself, the last thing you pay, however, is then taxes. See, that's the rich people's game. It's a rich people's game. First thing, first thing I got taken when I was in the military, FICA, income taxes, gross pay, and then you have your net pay. How many of you are frustrated with that? Shaq is learning this a very hard way at 18, 19 years old as a young professional basketball player. And I think many of you also experience that too as well. You work very hard at your job. You work in a T-Mobile. You work in Verizon. You work at whoever. You work in the shoe store. In the military, you're a cop, a firefighter. But you got to consider that the first few hours of the day is just meant to pay for Uncle Sam in terms of income taxes. And I know the frustration is high because now you got to pay more money for gas and food and baby food and diapers and rent, everything. So you're paying Uncle Sam in taxes. You're paying for the high cost of goods and services. What's left over for you? That's why you're watching the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel because you want to think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire. So therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And so get ahead of the money game. Because this is something that we don't know. Like, you know, my family work, work uh, paycheck to paycheck. We never had no money, but I had to get that Benz. I had to get my mom a Benz. Like, I just had to get that first. So after I spent that million dollars in a day, I sort of, you know, educated myself. Yeah. And it's okay not to know nothing. By the way, just uh, I spent uh, last week with a good friend of mine, mentor in the business, big brother in the business. And he's a, he's a business manager of Latino celebrities and artists. And the word around the financial advising world is that professional athletes are actually the worst clients to have as a financial professional because they do stuff like this. And by the way, can't blame them. They grew up their entire life ready for the big show. They finally get drafted, finally get the signing bonus, they finally get the contract. Of course you want to blow your money. It's just human nature. It's in all of us. What happens when you get your tax refund? You blow your money. What happens when you get a big bonus? You blow it on something because I deserve it, right? I deserve it. But then we put ourselves under these type of pressures. And then you ask yourself, did I really deserve it? Do I deserve this pressure? And that's why financial literacy is so important. So therefore you start detaching yourself from making emotional decisions with money. And you can make a little bit more logical, pragmatic decisions to benefit you in the future because all money is, is a tool. All your money is, is supposed to be working for you. Money's supposed to be your employee. Money's supposed to be working for you. You ain't supposed to be working for money long term. So if you don't know nothing, you just ask questions. Yeah. So everybody I saw that was successful. How you do that? How you do that? How you Good do that? Good for him. 
And the first book I bought was The Dummy's Guide to Starting Your Own Business. <laughs> everybody, everybody should get that book because they give you all the answers on how to start a business, how to be successful, what to look for. Shaq's giving you game. For. So after that, I became a little more literate. But I still didn't, didn't, didn't know a lot. Then when I went to L.A., Magic was having a function. He got some praise. I got a little bit more praise. I thought I was the man. And he said, it's all right to be famous, but at some point you want to start owning things. Mm. I didn't know what that mean. Ooh. <laughs> uh, this should give you a lot of relief out there. For those of you building your social media profiles, for those of you building your social media profiles and you actually have a business, congratulations. Because the, the pending looming this recession is about to expose a lot of people. Just because you have a lot of followers on social media doesn't necessarily be turn that into revenue in your bank account. Just because you have a lot of followers on TikTok and YouTube and all this different stuff doesn't mean you have any more cash flow coming your way. And guess what? When the recession hits, we're going to find out who's been swimming around without the trunks on because the tide is pulling back and it's going to expose a lot of people. And so just because you got a lot of followers, I've seen people with... 200 followers and 20,000 followers and 30,000 followers make a ton of money. One of our guys right here had uh, 1,500 people following him on his Facebook profile. Next thing you know, he's educating people about finances, educating people about retirement planning, educating people about this stuff I'm talking about and insurance and getting an insurance license and getting business for yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Next thing you know, 300 leads in his inbox. He's only got 25,000 people are following him on his personal profile on Facebook and he's got 300 leads waiting in his inbox. His team is flooded with appointments. He's matched up to his certified field trainers and he's running a firm now. He's, he's doing quite well. Former college pastor doing this type of stuff. So you don't have to have hundreds of thousands and 200,000 millions of people following you on these platforms because the real money is not necessarily the monetization of the actual platform for YouTube to pay you or Facebook to pay you or IG to pay you or TikTok to pay you. It's for you to create contact so therefore they can go to your website, they can DM you and therefore they can create some business opportunities and business conversation from there. But it's necessarily making money from the platform. So I went back to the book and I'm looking up sole proprietorship, you know, uh, Corporations. joint venture, all this stuff. Yep. And I'm devising my plan. Yeah. That's a valuable lesson, right? We, we always make that quote that formal education can make you a fortune, but self-education can make you a fortune. And so I'm glad that you said that part. One of the things that I, I love that you said is that you invest in things that change people's lives. And so one of those things was Google in 2004, before the IPO. Wow. Can you talk about how you got in? Uh, <laughs> he got in on Google. And the, the CEOs or the, the company itself? Believe it or not, that was by accident. Wow. <laughs> I'm at the Four Seasons, mm -hmm. sitting, and some white guys and their kids recognize me. <laughs> so I'm just being nice, signing autographs, oh, taking this pictures. Oh, Shaq invested in Google. And the Here we go. says, hey, man, I respect you. I like what you're doing in the community. I want to tell you about this company, Google. I didn't know what he was talking about. So uh, another good thing wow. is always have, it's always important to have somebody smarter than you yes. that works for you. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, a, that's right, man. Listen, the wisdom of the team is greater than the smartest person in your team. So lots of times people have ego problems, ego checks, self-confidence checks. You want to have people around you that are wiser, smarter, more intelligent than you. Of course, you're the one making the leadership decisions, but you want people that are... That, look at, I'm a C student. I'm a 2.2 GPA in, in high school. Don't have a college degree. But I want some very, very smart people working for me. I got attorneys working for me. I got CPAs working for me. I got all sorts of financial advisors and et cetera, et cetera, working for me. But the, the point is that you don't have to have a college degree. You don't have to have a PhD to be at the top of the food chain of your company and think that you're inadequate because you don't have a lot of certifications and, and education. But to surround yourself with the right people. Uh, the other thing I want to add here too as well is I've been listening to this, is that he was at an area where the kids recognize him. The, the, pers the person over there, his kids recognize Shaq. So I want you to know where, think about where professional athletes hang out. It's not where everybody else hangs out. They're hanging out in places of access. So, so think about this. What, what type of lifestyle do you want for your kids? You want your kids having access where people like Shaq and pro athletes and high in income people and, and people of influence and high caliber people are hanging around those spots or you just like, okay, I'm just cool with, you know, you know, X, Y, Z spot where nobody of any influence or significance is hanging out over there. And because Shaq also on his end, he benefited from it also because he got access to somebody, knew somebody, and they're going to talk to him like he's legit because he's got money to invest. What about you? 
Who's putting a bug in your ear about a company that's about to go IPO that's going to say, hey, man, maybe I need to take a look at this company, this this category, this sector, this particular asset that I want to invest in. One of the things that Sheena and I are looking forward to getting involved in is having our own Goldman Sachs account. Because Goldman Sachs, when, when, when people have uh, uh, IPOs, these guys actually help formulate and underwrite a lot of these IPOs. And you could be one of the first people in it but you have to have a massive amount of money. I think the account you need a, about $10 million to have in a brokerage account at Goldman Sachs. I'm working my game up. I'm growing just as much as everybody else watching this channel is. But I want to get a Goldman Sachs account because I want access to things before everybody else knows them. And how do I get that? By having my money with people, with wealth managers. They're working on projects. They're working on investments. So I could be one of the first people in. All that is is access. That's what winning the money game can do for you. You either learn the rules of the money game and you win the game or you just sit there in denial and complain and blame everybody else that you're not winning but everything is within inside your capacity if you're willing to be proactive and ask a lot of questions along the way just like Shaq is talking about that's the chip yeah, yeah absolutely if you're the smartest guy in the room there's a problem it's the wrong room so he's talking all this white boy stuff <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about but I was like you know what I got some white boys that understand your language <laughs> it sounds good what you're saying search engine future all that sound good, but nah, I'm not doing that. I hooked him up with my guy. My guy was like, it looks pretty good, let's do it. I put in a, 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 a bag, and then a couple <laughs> years later, I got a bigger bag. Nice. <laughs> That's usually so, how it works. <laughs> but check this out though. There's, there must be something going on with the Lakers organization. There's obviously something right that what the Bus family's doing with the Lakers organization. You got, you got Magic Johnson financially successful. Right, the, the only African-American in the United States of America that owns an insurance company. That's Equitrust Life based out of Chicago. About 51% from Guggenheim. Only African-American that owns an insurance company in the United States of America. And then you, And then he invested, of course, in Starbucks and uh, Magic in, Entertainment, et cetera, et cetera. And then you got Kobe. So after him, we got Kobe. Kobe took, takes a torch for the Lakers. And next thing you know, boom, explodes in his business enterprises. Sadly, gone too soon, but he was also on that track and then you got Shaq talking about it right now. And then the next guy we got coming up, we haven't talked about it yet, but it's LeBron. And think about what LeBron did. LeBron did. He turned down a $15 million McDonald's endorsement. So ah, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because when you take a check from somebody, they get, I'm pretty sure they have what they call non-competes, exclusive rights that you're only going to endorse one fast food chain, which is McDonald's. You can't be associated with Burger King. can't be associated with being, holding a Wendy's hamburger. You can't be associated with Chipotle. No, it's got to be only McDonald's. Well, he turned that down. And the other part here is that he invested in 2012 a million dollars, a bag, a million dollars into Blaze Pizza. And fast forward to 2020, 2021, 22, guess what? Blaze Pizza, that one million dollar investment is worth 40 million. And on top of that, he owns 12, 13 franchises. And on top of that, LeBron's the first active American athlete that became a billionaire through equity ownership of things, not because he's doing the work, not because he's playing basketball, because he's investing in things. You want equity. Don't pay me in cash. Don't pay me in salary. Pay me also in equity. If I get salary and bonuses along the way, awesome. But I want the big bag, which is equity. And this is what uh, Shaq has experienced with the bag that he put in. A couple years later, boom, with Google. And then, like, I always go to these text conferences because I like to hear smart people talk. Like, some people talk too much. And I like the people that talk too much because I'm stealing all their shit. <laughs> So, so Jeff Bezos, somebody asked Jeff Bezos, how you get so rich? And he said, I invest in things that change people's lives. Boom. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. So man, can I wait to see Shaq at I was coming out of the Orlando arena, and this lady was chewing me a new one. You MFers charging these babies $300 for shoes, Ooh, blah, blah, here blah, we go. blah, 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 blah. And I was like, ma'am, I don't make the price. I apologize. And I had some money in my pocket. I was like, here you go, baby. Go buy your son Jordans, whatever he want. She smacked the money out of my hand. Wow. So at that point, I went home and I thought, yo, 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 wait a minute. Listen, a guy's looking to be generous, looking to bless your family. You smack the money out of his hand? What's that all about? Is that, is that pride? Is it righteousness? What is that? Where does that come from? Whoever did. Would you do that? This guy, listen, I don't set the prices. I'm just here to endorse a shoe. 
But she was named after me. I, I totally get it. But I'm trying to bless your family. And by the way, Shaq is probably one of the most generous people out there that does a lot of charity and hanging out at Walmart and places and play basketball with people inside the neighborhood without the cameras being on. A lot of people would never know his charity. People would never know his heart. But you smack a man as generous, as willing to help out, a hand out. See, I, th I think that's where a lot of people right now today, is, if, somebody's if somebody's looking to propose to you an opportunity, look, if somebody's looking to recruit you, amen. You want people coming at you recruiting. You want people coming at you proposing things to you. Why? Because they see you as a player in their eyes. And you ask, you, you should flip around the question. Listen, I appreciate you trying to recruit me to your basketball team, your church, your company, whatever, to your investment. What do you see in me that you don't see in a lot of people? Why are you investing time in me right now to pitch me this opportunity? To pitch me this investment? What do you see in me? You should be honored that somebody's pitching you. If they're not talking to you, that's when you got to be worried. About I was like, you know what? I don't feel right charging the kids that want to be us $100, $200 for shoes. I already had a relationship with Walmart. I had another line. So I, I met with the CEO of Walmart. I said, look, I want to I wanna be the number one shoe seller of Walmart. Mm -hmm. So we did a deal that was in 95. And ever since 95, I've sold over 400 million pair. Wow. 400 million. Clap it up for that. And, Clap and, it up and, for that. And mine's, uh, mine's are 29 dollars 95 1995 But see, the secret is I know us. It's not that we don't want to wear $20 shoes. We don't want to wear shoes that look like they cost $20. You know, some kids still get picked on when they go to school, but there's still a little bit of, you know, respect behind my name. People don't fully understand that, and I want to dive even deeper because as a young person, you have foresight. I believe you turned down a $7 million extension from Reebok to start your own company. So speak about wow, that. Wow, the check power this out. Itself. Well, by the way, this is another I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. How many of you would turn down a salary, turn down a high commission check, turn down a high commission level, turn down... Uh, turn down a, a bigger bonus because you want to start your own deal. You want to start your own deal that you got ownership in. You're starting in from scratch. How many of you actually do that? Because there's people out here who might have a $200,000 job that they are afraid to leave. So you turned down a $7 million extension from Reebok, which was 20 years ago. Um, By the way, only a person with savings can do that. Because confidence comes from your own personal savings, your own net worth. Your, your own financial cushion, and the confidence is you're going to get up to work every day. You're going to get up and, and, and get jamming. Whatever it is that you got going on that day to build your business from scratch, they, that should give you confidence that I have to make revenue. Nobody else is going to give me revenue if, if you have a job. Now, if you're a person going from business to business to business to business, I don't know. Listen, uh, the, the, the conversation I have with a lot of people in, in the financial services world, whether it be real estate, mortgages, and insurance, or financial advising, I always laugh at guys that go from company to company to company to company to company and never really establish one thing. Well, I'm always looking for the bag, man. I'm looking for the opportunity. Matt, listen, can you do one thing? Can you establish a practice? Listen, Shaq had his opportunity to do what he did because he was good at basketball. His one thing, his number one endorsement was what he did on the basketball court. Michael Jordan said the same thing. No matter what Gatorade gave me, Nike gave me, Chevrolet gave me, my number one endorsement, number one endorsement is what I do on the basketball court. Am I winning championships? Am I there at practice? Am I putting in the work? Because none of the other deals will come your way unless you got one thing. And the mistake that a lot of the younger entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs want to do or aspiring first generation cash flow millionaires want to do, they try to get 15, you know, 15 different licenses. They're trying to get to 30 different opportunities all at once instead of focusing on one. And the way you look at it is, whatever I'm doing, is it going to give me the highest return based on the time and effort that I put in? If not then why am I trying to get a bunch of trickles? Focus on one thing that gets you the highest return per sale, per transaction, per revenue for what your current talent set and opportunity is providing at this very moment. And bet on yourself. And like you said, it ended up working out real big for you. I took a chance. What I realized from the previous business that I wasn't going to outsell Michael Jordan, but people know who I was, right? Because Michael used to kill me in Foot Locker. Like, they weren't even looking at my shit. <laughs> Which is cool. I understand. That's Mike. I ain't tripping. So I said, if I go somewhere where nobody's at, it's, it's all mine. mine. Wow. That's a big one right there. It's exactly the move I made in the money game. It's one of the biggest moves I made in the money game. Because I went to the small company, ran at that time by Patrick and David. At the time, I think they had approximately, you know, 1,000, 2,000 agents. And anyway, make a long story short, I took my experience and my business, my 
the limited partners that I had at that point and came to PHP Agency. And today we're the number one income earners at PHP Agency and we have a lot of stock of the company. And better part is we create a lot of people make six figures and mid six figures and stock equity ownership alongside it too as well. So it's just not my wife and I winning. It's a lot of other people winning. Why? Because we are, were able to start a new company from scratch we became a basically a quasi big fish in a small pond and we were able to exercise and grow because the first question I asked Patrick but David said, hey, can I co-brand? Can I go on social media? Can I build my own brand? Because in the financial services world, not the real estate or mortgage, but in the insurance world and financial, uh, financial services world, it's very tight with compliance. They don't like a lot of this stuff being done. And, and more so, a lot of the agents in our industry are older uh, male gentlemen. So there's not going to be a lot of younger multicultural in the marketplace doing what we're doing today. And I asked Patrick David, can I capitalize on that? Because I don't see that happening in the marketplace. And today, thanks to you, the Seven Vision Squad YouTube channel is at 178,000 subs. So I appreciate you guys for doing this and hope that you're getting some value out of these videos. It's all mine, right? And then I said, you know what? I know it's a lot of kids out there that, that, that you know, want to have something respectable on their feet, a respectable name, something that look good, and it's going to work. And it's the right thing to do. Because again, I didn't feel right charging little kids $100, $200 for shoes. First year, I felt good about it, but then after you know, reality kicked in, I was like, this ain't right. This ain't right. So I invested in something that's gonna change people's lives, and I just went for it. You know, being a... Being that's it, you know, that's what I see Shaq constantly doing. Not only is he working on his game, improving his game as a basketball player when he was playing, but he's constantly looking at things that, hey, change people's lives. He's working on his game. That's why he's a conference with very, very smart tech people. He's associating with the right folks. I'm reminded of a couple of Proverbs. First one goes like this. Proverbs 15, verse 22. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And Proverbs was written in the Bible by King Solomon, who's regarded as the richest and wisest king who ever lived. Another proverb that comes to mind is this. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11. This honest money dwindles away, but whomever gathers money little by little makes it grow. So Warren Buffett said something very powerful. He said, the reason why a lot of people don't like to listen to me because I teach people how to make money slow. See, everybody wants to get rich quick overnight. Everybody wants to get rich quick. They want that one hack. They want that shortcut. They want to get rich right away. They don't understand that what you're seeing Shaq now do is the effort of what he was doing early in his career. You see right now, later in his life, but he's, even with the cash he had as a player, championships, opportunities, endorsement, but he reinvested that money into what he is today. And this was going on 20 years ago, but everybody sees who he is today, but you don't see the stuff that was going on 20 years ago. Overnight millionaires, you don't see the stuff they were doing five years ago. You don't see the stuff they were doing 10 years ago, but next thing you know, they make, they pop, boom, oh, awesome. You're so lucky. Everybody says yes to you. It's so cool to have uh, credit cards and cash flow. You don't see the first year. You don't see the second year. You don't see the self-doubt. You don't see the hard conversation they had with themselves, the arguments that they had with their spouse, the self-doubt that was going on with themselves, whether or not this is the right venture to do or not. But they kept with it. And oftentimes when people say, hey man, just, just give me the bag, give me the bag, give me the bag, without understanding the head knowledge that goes along with receiving the bag or receiving the opportunity. Being a CEO starts up here. Everybody exactly. in this room is already exactly. a CEO. There it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, clap it up for yourselves. For sure, for sure. Now you don't, you don't have to be a, you don't have to own a business to be a CEO. Being a CEO is a mentality. If you, you have that CEO mentality, your life. you have that belief, it will work. Of course, you're in charge of your life. And downs. When I first started, sell 10,000 pair, 20,000 pair, 50,000 pair, and then it just kept going. So, you know, I've been doing it since, since 95. So 95 to now, that's what, 30 something years? 400 million pair. And then I went to China and did the same thing. Get some of that Chinese money. <laughs> See, that's it. You just saw, it's 2000, what? This, I think this is 2021 or 2022 when earlier this year when this Invest Fest was being held. He's been at this for 30 plus years working on his money game. So what about you right now? Fast forward 30 years. Right, but matter of fact, in the comment section below, what age are you right now? And what do you have a future vintage of what your financial future is gonna look like in the next 30 years? I wonder how big you're thinking. And more importantly, what you're actually willing to do. Put in the comment section about how old you're at right now in 30 years and so how old you'll be and what your net worth will be at that time. I wanna see how big the dreamers are of the seven figure squad. Let's go. What is your greatest highlight in business thus far? What's something that you look at and say, you know what? This is incredible. I'm so proud that I did this. I don't like to seem like I'm bragging, but I'm gonna ask you a question. 
Who owns Who owns Marilyn Monroe? It's a great question. Who owns Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe? Monroe? Playboy? Who owns Elvis Presley? Who owns Forever 21? Who owns J.C. Penney? Me. The <laughs> yeah, um, Here I'm thinking of Warren Buffett, real. Black Blackstone, Black Rock. Hey, stand up for that, y'all. Stop playing. <laughs> Stop playing. Talk heavy. <laughs> Talk heavy. That's my awesome, real. man. Talk to him. Talk to him. So my real business, my real business is I own 50 brands. Wow. So when I was retired. So think about this real quick. Oftentimes people think financial freedom, financial independence is building up a pile of cash and just chilling in, in the beach, in the Bahamas, whatever the case may be. But why is Shaq still working today? Why is Shaq still on the NBA show? Why is Shaq still commentating? Why is Shaq still relevant in the NBA today? Because he loves this game. There's a, there's a level of confidence and joy and passion when it comes to this chapter of his life. And so many of you are watching this. You're in a current chapter right now. Maybe you can just close one right behind you or you have to close one behind you and open up the next one and say, okay, Lord, what do you got for me right now? What, what access do you have for me right now with the skills and the current ability that I have right now? Because I'm sure Shaq has been starting to think about this stuff over the last 30 years. Ownership, 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 not salary, salary. Now, again, his greatest endorsement was he's a champion. I'm looking around, I'm like, how does Michael Jackson and all these guys live forever? So one of the chapters in the book, joint ventureship. So I called the three companies that help people live forever and they brought my band for a lot of money. So I took half that money, put it back in the company. Now I'm the number two guy in the company. <laughs> he, just, he just rolled cash, rolled cash. How many guys get a big bag? You get a big payout. You spend it. That's your first initial desire when you get a paycheck. You spend it. Him? Boom. I, saw, I got profit. I'm going to double down and reinvest that money right away. Not even touch it. Because his thinking is how this is going to get him to the next Level. It's much like some of you that go to college. You don't think twice about spending money on college books. But that's just like how people, like Shaq, see money. It's like a college book. It's a requirement for me to get to the next level. So in other words, I'm not li you're not living off the college book. You're not living off the purchase. You're not living off the capital gain of your investment. But it's being, being reinvested back into the next big deal. Instead of taking all that money and just saying, okay, you control 50% of my brand. Nope, I'm going to put it back in. Just in case. Cause he has control you over always it. Always got to keep an eye on them, right? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. could have, they could have bought my brand and made me go away, but I'm like, nope. Put money back in the company now. I own all those other brands. So if Shaq goes away, shit, we still got Elvis. <laughs> 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 you ain't nothing but a hound dog. And howling all the time. Okay, listen, I, man, I cannot wait to meet Shaq here in a couple months. I got so much value from Shaq right now. A lot of. Notes I'm taking away from his game and constantly making sure I have access to the right people and, and elevating who I have access to because uh, the reason why the rich are the rich is because of that. They have access to certain conversations and questions they ask of themselves. It's more than just money. You, everybody can have a lot of money. You can compound it and double it and triple it and quadruple it, but you got to get this right. And so, you know, uh, one, of the guys, one of the hosts here mentioned something very, very profound. And uh, I'll reiterate in, in my version of the way I say it. Education will make you a current living, but self-education, ongoing learning, will make you a life. What do you want? Do you want a living or you want to build a life? You want to build a generational wealth. You want to be a ma massive blessing to the people that carry your last name and your lineage. So that being said, I'd love to know what your thoughts, your questions are, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? How have you seen this interview with Shaq. And uh, by the way, for some of you who's not part of our agency, I got a couple tickets. So if you put your comment section below, I might just have some tickets for people that watch the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel that cannot be with PHP agency, that cannot be with my firm outside of company. If you're uh, in the United States of America, uh, this will qualify for only for you. But if you're inside the United States of America and you give me your biggest takeaway, put in a comment section below. Uh, and you can fly your way out to our MGM Grand uh, uh, event on August 10th, and you can put yourself up. Uh, I will make sure there's a ticket there waiting for you to get access to our event. It's going to be an event. It's, a, it's literally a private event, but uh, 12,000 people will be there. 
of our company, but you'll be able to see Nelly open up. You'll be able to see uh, 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 Layla Ali. You'll be able to see uh, Penn and Teller, the number one magic show in Vegas, give us a private show at our Gala Awards Night event. And then you're going to see this interview live in person in Shaq. Now, you may be amongst the crowd. we got 12,000 people at the MGM Grand Arena, but uh, please put your takeaway below because I just might put you in a raffle and select one of you in the next video, announce who that winner is, and you get a ticket from me to you, my gift from me to you. Again, you got to be in the United States of America. You've got to fly your way out to Las Vegas. You got to be responsible for your travel. You got to be responsible for your room and board. You got to be responsible for your food. But if you come out to Vegas because I select a lucky winner from putting your comments, your biggest takeaway in the comment section below, I will select you for the ticket. So my obligation is to give you a ticket, okay? And uh, depending on our conversation, who knows where that might go. So being said, guys, uh, appreciate it. If you haven't seen the other two reaction videos, please check out these other two right here. If you found some value in this video, you haven't done so already, please consider hitting like. If you found some value in the other videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mind smart guy and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart and be money smart today.